Nice, the day's finally come and you've got yourself a steering wheel and pedal setup because you want to play a Seto Corsa on PC. So first of all, awesome purchase, great choice. I've been using this for the last year and a half and it's great fun. But unfortunately, unlike console, setting up on PC is not as simple as plug and play. So in this video, I'm just going to go through the setup guide, how to get it all working, get you on the game as quick as possible, and also go over some troubleshooting ideas because you do tend to run into issues when using third party software, or in this case, the actual manufacturer's software, which isn't ideal. However, I'm going to go over what those issues are and how you can get around them. And lucky for you, this is a nice and quick setup process. It doesn't take you long and you don't have to be good with computers to understand what you need to do to get this set up and running. So this isn't going to be from the very beginning, this is literally just going to be the steering wheel setup portion of the video. If you've not already set up the game with the likes of Content Manager, Sol, CSP, things like that, I don't want to overwhelm you now. I would recommend watching one of those videos first, get everything set up, ready to go, and then you want to come back and get a steering wheel setup video in the background. It is a video I'm probably going to make myself, if I have made it by now the link will be in the description or on the screen, feel free to give that a watch first and get an understanding as to what you need in the background to actually get a Seto Corsa working before getting a steering wheel prepared. So based on the title this is quite obvious but you're going to need one of two things, you're either going to need a Logitech G29 or a Logitech G920 steering wheel. And as an optional part, you can have the shifter as well. Depends if you've gone for it or not. If you've not got it, I really do recommend it. And if you didn't know already, they are the exact same steering wheel. One of them is made for PC and Xbox, and one of them is made for PC and PlayStation. And the only other thing you're gonna need is a piece of software called Logitech G Hub. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first thing you wanna do is go to the Logitech G website. Link will be in the description and there is a download button on the first page. Click download and that will give you the installer. You can put the installer wherever you want. You can put it on your desktop or have it in your downloads folder. Just simply double click and run. As you can see, I've already got it installed on my side, but when you click on it for the first time, you'll have the option to decide where you want to install the program. And then you just click install and it shouldn't take any longer than two minutes. So once that's all installed, you just want to open Logitech G Hub. I would definitely recommend pinning this to the taskbar or putting it on the desktop as you will need to open it every time you use the steering wheel. So one thing you might notice straight away is I'm actually using an old version of the Logitech G Hub. And the reason for that is the latest version at the time of recording wasn't recognizing my shifter when it was plugged into the steering wheel. And after a lot of headache, I ended up just installing an older version and that seemed to do the trick. I would always recommend using the latest version of a software, however if it's not fixed at the point of you watching this video, I'd recommend searching on YouTube how to get a downgraded version of Logitech G Hub. I would love to put a link in the description for you, however because it's off third party websites I can't be trusting the links that it's not got any viruses or anything dodgy in there. I've just taken the risk on my side, but if you want to find it, it's nice and easy to get hold of on the internet somewhere. And like I say, there's also tutorials out there if you did want to follow along from someone else's video. But if you've decided not to go with the shifter, you should be absolutely fine with the latest version of the software, and they might have even fixed the issue on the latest version. Once you're in here, you just want to click on the steering wheel and that'll open the settings. So I think these might be the default anyway, but if you just copy what I've got on screen, the operating range needs to be 900. Set the sensitivity how you want it, but start off with 50 and work in either direction. Centering spring is something I would have off completely, as you can see I've got it unchecked there. If you have it turned on for a Seto Corsa, it's going to cause you problems and it's not going to feel authentic. And basically it does exactly what it says on the tin, it is a force centre in spring, so if you're in a race or you're drifting, it's basically just going to be trying to pull the steering wheel straight at all times, which definitely doesn't happen in real life, especially if you're sim drifting, you want this turned off completely. Once all these are done, you're good to leave Logitech G Hub, leave it open, don't click the X, you do want this open in the background if you do want the steering wheel to work on the game. So the next thing you want to open is Content Manager. So once you've loaded into Content Manager, you want to click on Settings. You want to hover over to Assetto Corsa in the middle. Then you want to go on to Controls. So at the top you'll have a choice of the input method. Obviously you want to be clicking Wheel for this. Obviously you can play with the gamepad if you did want to, but that's not what this game is made for. Similar settings to before, you want 900 degrees of rotational steering. 
on your screen you will have a similar box to what I've got in Handbrake where it's click to assign. You just want to click on that box and then give your steering wheel a little wiggle. As for the other settings, I recommend just copying them exactly as they are. With the most important ones being invert on the throttle, brake and clutch if you are using it. So now we've got those parts set up, we want to set up the shifters and these are the last important parts. Once we've done these, it's pretty much ready to go and you can do whatever you want from there. So first things first, if you're going to be using the paddles and not the shifter, you don't have to have the H shifter ticked. If you are going to be using the shifter, check this box and then essentially same rule as before, click to assign. You just want to click each box and then flick through the gears on the shifter. If you're going to be using the paddles, simple, click on the box, right paddle for shifting up, left paddle for shifting down. So again, just copy the settings off this screen. I think I left mine standard when I first booted up, although if I have changed anything, I would use these settings. I'm quite happy with the setup I've got on the G29 right now. I've not had to ever touch this setting, um, so I definitely recommend just copying exactly what you've got on screen, or have a play around with them if you want to get experimental and see how you want the steering wheel to feel. Okay, so then the last thing, you want to make sure you've got your G-Hub open, you're obviously within Content Manager, and now you want to test it, just hit go and launch a race. And there you go, it should be now fully up and running, everything should be running smoothly at this point. All you have to do is start the race and just give the steering wheel a little wobble, see if everything's working alright. At this point, if it's not working or you're having any issues, just make sure that Logitech G-Hub is open and apart from that, it should be working. However, if you do run into any issues, do feel free to put them in the comment section below. I'm quite active on YouTube, so we'll respond if you do have any questions or queries. And also, if you're facing any issues, I can go through some diagnosis for you and give you some suggestions as to how you can get it working. But great news if yours is working right now, but don't get disheartened. What you'll find with the steering wheel is it's a lot harder than what you might have initially thought. Especially when it comes to drifting, it looks so easy when you're watching other people do it and then as soon as you get in the car for the first time you find yourself spinning in circles and you just can't get to grips with it. But don't give up on it, it's so much fun. Like I say, one of the best purchases you're ever going to make. I've been using this for a year and a half and the fun hasn't stopped and I have no intention of upgrading anytime soon. It's definitely more than enough kit just for a casual player. So, thanks for watching this tutorial. If there's anything else you want to see, do let me know in the comment section down below. Cheers.